Hi guys, my name is Quinn and I live in this Ford Transit with my two cats, Otto and Atlas. Twenty twenty was obviously a pretty crazy year for everyone, but I had just moved to Los Angeles from Chicago two weeks before the pandemic started. And so when I got to LA, I was an event producer. We had planned this huge world tour, eight cities, three countries. Then it all just sort of stopped. So I didn't really want to live in Los Angeles anymore, so I ended up moving back to Chicago. Then I moved um, to Colorado, and the entire time I was trying to figure out where to move, I had Atlas and Otto with me. So we did around 10,000 miles together, just going back and forth, trying to figure out where to live. We started researching van life, and so once I started watching a ton of YouTube videos and figuring it out, I really thought that I could do this. So in November, I found the perfect van after searching forever for it. Went down to Indiana, picked it up, and then I gave it to builders to work on for around three months. And then in February, we started driving and we've never looked back since. It's been pretty incredible that I, as a solo female, can tour around the country with my two cats, Atlas and Otto, and love every second of it. So I'm excited to share with you my van build. I hope you like it. I'd love to hear some of your opinions, and uh, let's go from there. I'm excited to show you around. This is my kitchen. <laughs> I was working with this contractor out of Grand Junction and he personalized a stovetop tray cover. And this is really awesome because I love my stove, but one of the things with the cats is they always go like this. This tray is an amazing tray because then it just doubles as a table and sometimes I work as a standing desk. Or if we're playing games or something, we'll take this, I'll put some food in it and any books or wine and I can like put it on my bed. So it's like a really nice addition that is both functional and looks pretty good. So this is my dish rack and so I use this when I dry my dishes and then when I'm not using it, I think it looks kind of nice. Like I don't know what else to put there. I absolutely love spices. I cook with spices all the time. This is a company called The Spice House out of Chicago. So it kind of reminds me of home because I used to live literally right across the street from it and I'm like obsessed with these spices. I started collecting things prior to this from all of my travels. And so one of my favorite souvenirs that I picked up like two years ago was these Portuguese tiles. So when I went to Lisbon, I picked up these really great tiles and a lot of them were broken and they kind of meshed them back together. That's probably one of my favorite personalized touches. I didn't want like a huge backsplash. I honestly think that eventually I'll put a window here. Okay, welcome to my upper cabinets. So here you have your pantry. So I have a ton of like nut products in here. I don't know why I love nut products so much. This is my dishes. So when I first started on the road, I stuffed this van. I put everything that I physically could fit in this van. And then when I went on the road for the first month, I didn't use any of it. So when I went back to my home base, which is in Colorado, I ended up getting rid of almost all of my dishes. I didn't need plates. I only use bowls. So like these are the, they're like from Target. They're like the most incredible bowls ever. And then these are the non-breakable, non-chippable ones. I have my Magic Bullet blender and then I have three tea mugs. This is my two glasses. So if I want like a nice fancy drink, these are my two glasses. <laughs> and that is pretty much the extent of, um, my dishware and then i also have all my toiletries so since the ford transit is curved that's why we can't do the, the up cabinet and then these help with the springing keeping them up and then i also have like a magnet system to keep them closed but this is all my skincare my natural deodorant i love the ordinary so cheap and so nice perfume because i still want to smell nice and then i recently gave up coffee about three months ago because i am a solo female and i don't want to feel jittery on the road so i drink a lot of mud water i drink a lot of tea but this is all of my skincare and all my stuff and whenever i use it i just sort of take it out and then i put here and then same with this as you just kind of put them down and then you put them back up and it's really easy and i have a lot more space so maybe I should buy some more products. Just kidding. <laughs> so moving on is the sink. So the sink I really wanted because I wanted the most counter space. So I definitely wanted where the butcher block was also on top of the sink, but I wanted a very deep sink. I'm not so great at doing dishes and I have a lot of hair. And so when I'm not able to shower, I'd love to have my entire head fit in that sink. 
I don't love the fact that it's white because I realized it stains really easily. So if you can avoid getting white, I liked it because it like my aesthetic is primarily white. Um, but if you can avoid it, avoid it because I realized it really stains pretty easily. <laughs> so I have a sliding door. So one of the things with the sliding door is I initially wanted the sliding door for security and that way I could lock it whenever I needed to lock it. But I've learned that I actually like it more for insulation. Since I have two cats, typically if I'm cooking or maybe it's bad weather outside but I need the doors open or I don't know, I just need them to be in here for a little bit, I will open this. I will put them in there. They still have room to hang out. And then I will close this and I almost get this whole area to myself and I don't have to like attach them to the van or worry about them kind of like drifting away. And I'll only do this obviously when it's like cooler outside. Really, really, really highly recommend this door. And then anyone with a transit, you know how the roof kind of curves down. Well, it's a perfect space for some extra storage. So all of this is extra storage. It goes the entire distance. So I have like two towels back there. I've got some of my tools back there. I've got the cat food and a lot of the cat products back there. Um, and also you can see that this like overhang. So I've got a lot of my like receipts for my business. So this is an amazing way to utilize some additional storage in your Ford Transit. Additionally with this partition wall is this is pretty hollow. Um, so I store things in it. So I can make this into like a spice pantry. I have towels hanging in it right now. I've got cleaning supplies, but you have about six inches in this partition wall where I'm like physically stuffing my window covers and some more cat products because this whole van is filled with cat products. While we're on the topic of sort of this wall, this is the lights in the main area. And then this one operates my water pump. So when I push this on, then I can get flowing water where I don't have to physically pump it myself. And then when I press this button, which I'm not gonna press this button right now, is my gray water tank is underneath the van. So when I press this button, it is an electrical release and then everything will be released into the dump. So it's super easy, super effective. I don't need to do anything weird wires down there, which is really nice. So this is a glass breaking sensor. So I've seen a lot of solo females um, use a system called Simply Safe. So Simply Safe is um, a security system. So if anyone breaks any glass, this will alert me and then I will, the police will be dispatched. So if I'm not here and something happens, the police will know my GPS coordinates and they will go to the location because I can do it on my app. So that's really nice. And then I also have a camera, which we'll show you a little bit later. And I have like a little module that it all connects into like a home base that I plug in um, and it has like electrical battery too. So if there's like a power outage, it will still work. Okay, so my fridge. I haven't had a chance to go grocery shopping, so it's a little empty, but this fridge fits a ton. So this is the isotherm. This is the 85 liter one, I believe. But you can tell it has a ton of space in it and it has a freezer. So the freezer does get a little like frost happy and there's like a ton of chunks of ice, but like I love it. I also, instead of using Ziploc bags, use a lot of the beeswax wraps. I love them for cheese, for fruit, pretty much like this is a huge fridge. I love this fridge. This fridge is perfect for two people. For my build, I wanted to have a lot of desk space. I also wanted to have a lot of open space for the cat. I used to have like a legume table here, but it got kind of in the way. So I kept this open and what we did with this contractor that I used out of Colorado is we put a desk right here. So this way it doesn't take up any room. We did the chain for a little bit, but the chain got a little bit annoying. The cats went a little bit crazy with the chain. And so this just reinforces it a little bit more. And then you come on down and then I can easily work here. So it's super nice. I have some extra storage right here that I put my makeup in. I also sometimes when I'm here is like, I'll take one of like the pillows and then I'll just put a pillow right here and then I will lounge. I can kind of put my legs out all the way. Like I love this space so much and I can like look out and see what's going on. So in addition to the desk that I have right here for work, I also wanted a desk that people could hang out at. So this is our makeshift big table. A lot of times I see tables that are right here that come down this big with a chain, but I wanted one a little bit bigger. I have a lot of friends that come and visit me and we both stay in the van or maybe they camp out. And I wanted three people to sit across this table and play cards hang out, chill. And this is the prototype, so like go easy on us. He just like whipped this up and it was freaking genius because I was like, yeah, I want like a three, four foot table, but literally this is a huge table. And so how it does is it folds, so you can see, um, it folds back into itself. So what you do is that, that one already did it itself, so you can tell that it's a prototype. You take these little extenders off, you flip this down, and then you flip this down if it behaves. And then there's a little latch and you stick the latch in 
and voila eventually we're gonna have something here where it like kind of comes down like this and then it's also a standing desk so if I'm sitting on the bench um, and laying out I'll have this as an option too or like I can stand and work from it but again that'll be prototype phase number two okay so the two questions I get asked the most out of the van build is number one where is your toilet do you have a toilet and number two is where is the litter box so let me show you I decided to put for space reasons and because my fridge is huge I decided to put my toilet underneath my bed and so it rolls out and this isn't a very popular toilet in the van life industry. It's really used in boating, but this is called a sea head toilet. It is a composting toilet. And then you have this little, little handle. You hook up this little handle and then you go like this. And so this is if you decided to go number two, this is how you would turn um, and compost it. Um, but I absolutely love this toilet. Again, it is cheaper than the nature's head and I, it does not smell at all. I put this little thing here so that it can hold this. But this is my toilet. I use it every morning. If I'm staying in a campground, I'll use obviously a campground. If I'm staying out in the middle of nowhere, I'll just like go outside. If I'm near a gas station, then I'll go in a gas station. But there's tons of options. So if you don't have a toilet in your van, it's you don't need to have a toilet in your van. It's just really nice. Um, I find this to be a luxury in my van. But it's great because I can just close it and no one knows it's there. <laughs> So now the litter box. So um, for the litter box, there's a couple different reasons or ways to use it. So how you do it, and this is all clean, so don't worry. Um, right now I'm trying out paper pellets. I don't like clay litter because I just think it smells bad and I don't like the fact that it clumps up too much. I like stuff like this, but anyway. So this is a litter box. Um, this is how I dump it every single day. So one of the other things that I got stuck on is this is a charcoal deodorizer. This thing literally soaks up all the smell and then when it you can start smelling things again, you put this out in the sun for like 24 hours and it, you just use it again. And I put this right next to the litter box, like right on the inside of it and it works wonders. I'm obsessed with it. But another way that you can get to the litter box is if you remove this and you get to it this way. I don't really use this way as much. I typically do the rollout, but this is a really another great option. If you wanted to have a top entry, you would just put a hole right here and then your cats could go on the inside. I put the deodorizer here and then they go into the litter box from this way. The third most asked question that I get is, when you leave the van, how do you make sure that your cats stay cool? Now, one, this is a fully insulated van, so it doesn't operate like a normal car would. So when I close all these doors, it's not gonna get super hot in here. It's gonna maintain the temperature. Now, the biggest piece of advice that I can give to you is get two forms or areas of circulation in your van. Not one, but two. I personally have three. So this one I have right here is a fantastic fan. And this one you can have open. You cannot drive with it open and you cannot have it open Open when it rains but I have it open 100% of the time whenever I am stationary and I'm obsessed with this fan I love it so much so this I wanted to have something above my kitchen I wanted to have something take the smell out and I cook fish probably every other night and it does not smell like fish in here thank God so I love the fantastic fan and I also have another fan I have a max air fan right here so the max air fan is a bit covered so you can use the max air fan when it rains and you can drive with the max air fan on now the cool thing about having two fans so you have your max air fan blowing down and your fantastic air fan blowing up it creates a circulation where you're literally getting this incredible air in your van for my third area of circulation when I close this door this is another form of air that I have coming into the van. So what's really great about this is when I have both of these fans going, there's a nice flow of circulation and it keeps the van really, really, really cool. Um, I travel with the weather. So I'm traveling with weather 80 degrees and below. If I do have to leave the van for whatever period of time, say I'm doing a hike, I'm always doing a hike in the morning when it is the coldest part of the day. Now, again, another amazing thing is I have a security camera right here. So this really helps for me to watch over what's happening in the van, what they're doing in the van. If anyone breaks in from the van, here's like the home base of it. So I plug this in um, to one of my outlets right there. It also uh, monitors the weather. I use a Bluetooth meat thermometer in here and that helps me monitor the, the temperature for my phone. So that's, I really, really appreciate that. I love that. Okay, lighting. Um, so I have three areas of lights. I've got lights under here that are connected to a switch. I have lights here that are connected to a switch right on top. 
And then on my bed, I have lights that are attached to a dimmer. So this thing over here is a dimmer that I can go up and down, up and down. And it's so nice at night that I can um, dim the lights above my bed. So what I have for electric, and I have a really great electrical system. So I've got four 100 watt Renology um, solar panels on top. I also have a really awesome rooftop deck, which I never use, but I love it. So this is how you get to it. So yes, the ladder's up here, but you put your foot here and then you climb up. <laughs> and there is a baby rooftop deck up here. So it's only like one, two, three, four like panels of wood. Um, but I really like it. I recommend getting a lighter color so that it doesn't heat up. So get like a wood color or like I have like a gray color and it never gets warm. Um, but I like bringing coffee up here. I like watching the sunrise, sunset. Um, it's just a really nice area for like a different point of view, but you could probably have like three people up here. Um, but anyway, so I have 400 watts of solar on um, the top. I have a Victron inverter um, down below, and then I have 300 amp hours of Battleborn batteries um, in electric. And so my electrical system is all on this side of my bed. If I wanted to get to it, I would just do this. I also have a propane tank. So it's a tiny little, I think it's like the five gallon, I think. Um, but I've been using it for the last two months and it still has not gone out. And then all of my solar, um, kind of the operating controls are over here. So if I wanted to turn the inverter on, I would turn it on here. And what's really great is this charges everything. Since I've been in the desert, since I've been in a really, really high sunlight area, I've never run out. So my cats love these toys. These are their favorite toys. They refuse to play with any other toy. Um, and they're obsessed with them. So they're like, I don't know, a dollar um, for like 30 of them on Amazon. So I'll link these below too, but they're obsessed with them. Anyway, these are also fake plants. I don't know if you could tell. My cats will eat all the plants. So, and I'm incapable of taking care of plants. Like you can see that these plants have already started to die. So I wanted to add the extra greenery of fake plants. So my cats don't eat them and they still look great. <laughs> I'm a huge snowboarder. I've been doing it for, I don't know, like 16 years. And one of the biggest things with the van is I wanted a way to warm it up because I am gonna be in some pretty cool temperatures. I have a Wabasto 2000 um, heater. And so this connects to my gas tank and then it will pump out warm air. And how you determine it, because sometimes you do have to mess with it with the altitude, is you have this um, dial right here. I was, um, in the van in Chicago when it was, I think it was like negative 10 outside and I was using, it was just myself. So like my cats weren't here, but it was like negative 10 outside. I put the heater on, put my sleeping bag on, had two comforters in here and it was amazing. Like it worked, it was so toasty. I was sweating. So it really, really, really works. Highly, highly, highly recommend this heater. So I have a huge hat collection. Um, as you can see, I love hats. There's four hats in this van right now. And so how they stay up is I literally just go like this and then um, I attach them to there. And maybe if I'm on a bumpy road, they'll fall, but pretty much they never fall. Okay, so my cabinets. I have three really, really, really big ones, really long ones. So this is a very messy everything drawer. I've got spoons, I've got my panic button for my security system, I've got knives, I've got my EpiPen. So then I have this drawer, which is very neat and organized. I'm obsessed with this. If you don't have one, you should get one. It's called the Garmin InReach and there's a little SOS button. So I find myself in places that doesn't have service. So this is perfect for staying in contact with people because you can text them off this satellite phone. This is my hair product section. I used to work in the hair industry and I love, I love nice hair products. This is all my jewelry. This is my Wi-Fi router. So I'll get a little bit more into this in a new video, but this is my AT&T Wi-Fi router. I do 50 gigs a month. It's like $50 a month. I just plug this in, plug it in, and then I just press the button and I have Wi-Fi and it's amazing. One of the things though that I would recommend is if you're going with AT&T, you should probably have Verizon service or vice versa. I have AT&T as my cell phone carrier. And so like in places like California where AT&T isn't like the best carrier, that means this won't be the best either. So if you're gonna do Wi-Fi and hotspot routers, get them different from your phone so that you get coverage from all over the place. Here is my panel for my security system. This is out of range because it's not on right now, but this is my panel and I keep it in here. So this is really nice. And then fun parts. As a solo female on the road, 
You need weapons. I'm not gonna go through all the weapons that I have in my van, but definitely tasers. So I've got a couple flashlight tasers, and then I've got like some small tasers that I always have on me. You can never be obviously too safe. I also have pepper spray, wasp spray, and bear spray, but that's my safety tools. <laughs> So the final drawer um, that I'll take you through is my pots and pans and then my fruit drawer. So I absolutely love cooking with this. It's like an all-purpose pan. I also have a Dutch oven that one of my friends got me. Thank you, Meg. I have my fruit. I've got a blender. I've got, so I don't really drink coffee anymore. I'm a tea person. But if I have friends over and want to do coffee, this is like a coffee presser, which is really nice. So I really like that. And then for my favorite thing in the van, <laughs> this is my electric tea kettle and it's a collapsible tea kettle. Um, so I don't need to light my stove every morning. Instead, I can use this and it just plugs into the wall and it doesn't take that much voltage. And it is literally the greatest thing. I use it probably four times a day. And then when you're done, you just collapse it and it's the best thing ever. And it heats water up in like 30 seconds. It's like amazing. Um, but anyway, that is the store. Oh, I also have more collapsible containers. I'm trying really hard not to use Ziploc bags or, or paper towels. So I have stasher bags, which are really great, that are really easily washable. And then I also have these, and these are also collapsible. So, so that's really nice too for, for saving space, I guess. But that's that. <laughs> I am a huge, huge, huge gear junkie. So while the dinette looks really, really great on Instagram and on some of my friends' builds, like I'm obsessed with the dinette. You can fit so many more people there. I can't have a dinette because I love gear too much. So anyway, come take a look at my garage. I am obsessed with this cooler. Now I have a really big fridge, but I fill that fridge with food. So like when I went like spin drifts or like sparkling water or something like that, I'll always put this in here. And whenever I'm caravanning, this is just so much more helpful. But when you take the cooler away, I have so many other things. I've got extra clothes based on the season as well as if I'm in like a business situation or like I'm at a speaking event, this is like some of where my nice clothes live. I've got some of my like goggles, helmet, snowboarding stuff. This is really nice for my outdoor shower. So I'll just put this down so that I don't get muddy. This is a solar panel. So this is my extra backup um, solar panel. It is 100 watts and it's from Jackery and it goes to my Jackery electric generator. So this is a thousand watts. So this will power everything for days. Like I think I'm still on the first usage. So like when I'm outside, I'll use this for my laptop. I'll use it for my phone. I'll use it for a blender or anything like that. Oh my gosh, if I could tell you one thing, um, I want to be, get, the, get the kettle that collapses, but it is put all of your stuff that you want to take to the gym in your bag. So you're constantly not having to grab anything from your kitchen area or anything like that. So this is my toiletry bag. This is my shampoo bag. This is everything that it would do to shower um, or go to the gym. So gym shoes are in here too. So this is really nice. And it's just so easy to grab this instead of like having to, you know, place it everywhere. So that's that. Um, this is a moon shade. This is an awning. So you can attach the awning here and go this way and like sleep with the doors open or get a little bit of extra shade. Or I attach my moon shade um, to the sliding door. So the sliding door goes above it. I'll show you guys a video of it. But that is my moon shade. So this is an awning. I've got my um, weights here. I've got my extra tools. I've got more cat stuff. So this is where I put all my extra cat food, cat litter. And then I also have some of their like cat packs and then like some workout stuff. Now moving on to the outdoor shower. So this is my water tank. This is a 20 gallon water tank. I do wish that I had a little bit of a bigger water tank. I would have loved like a 30 gallon or 37 gallon. But I also have a Bosch 2.5 liter um, water heater. So how I turn the water heater on is when I shower, which I'll show you how to shower in a second, I just flip this switch. And then in 10 minutes, I have really, really, really warm water. And then the outdoor shower is right here. So this connects to my water tank. And so when I wanna shower, I take my awesome picnic table. It doubles as some storage. So for my shower specifically, my outdoor shower, so I've got my jumper cables, I've got my shower hookup, I've got my water filter when I fill my water tank, and then I've got my flexible hose when I fill my water tank. But for the shower specifically, we'll grab this. We will put this, and I won't do it now, but you literally just like put this in here. Once you do it, then this is cold, this is hot, and then you shower. So this is really nice. So for more gear in my garage, um, I have a kayak in here, believe it or not. So this is an origami folding um, Oru kayak. 
I love this thing so much. It takes like six minutes to put together. It's only like 21 pounds. I also have a yoga mat that is very dusty because I've been using it a lot. I also have um, a tent and a sleeping bag in this like little hole area too, but I'm not gonna get it out because it is really smashed in there. I've got two of your um, camping chairs in here, which is really nice because as a solo person, you always wanna make friends or my cat Alice likes to sit in them too. And then finally, this is my Jackery. So this is the electric generator that I was telling you about. This is a thousand amp hours. You can charge it with the solar panel or you can just like plug it in. So I'm really appreciative for the Jackery. This is how I access all of my electric. So I go through here and then this is the fuse box as well. So if something's going wrong, I'll go to the fuse box that's over here. When I'm in the colder months, I have a snowboarding attachment that I put up here and then I slide my snowboard. But one of the things that I will encourage you guys not to do is don't overfill your garage like I have because when I go to place things like firewood, I don't really have any room for any firewood. But finally on the garage section is, I have these magnetic hooks everywhere. So they're 100 pound magnetic hooks. I even have them holding up my curtains as well. So you can see that like on my curtains, instead of like forcing everything in there, they just are attached by magnetic hook and then it goes right underneath. And so that's really, um, really helpful. But I put all of my climbing gear on here, my hammock, my chalk bag, and then I've got some of my winter clothes here. These are just some of my vests that I thrifted. And then this is an awesome messenger bag from Eagle Creek. And what's great is like it folds out so Otto can sit here whenever I have it on my backpack. So like my cat literally can just like perch up here and then he's good to go whenever we're on hikes. But really that's my huge garage area. So clearly I cannot have a dinette of any sort because I have way too much stuff. Welcome to my closet. Um, I worked a corporate job prior to living in a van and I went from like having a huge wardrobe to 52 inches. So this is how we do it. I use these Ikea. They're around 11 and a half inches, so I think this is 12 inches. So these fit perfectly. I've got Eagle Creek, what are these, packing cubes that are really, really amazing. I mean, I probably have close to, like, I don't know, 60 outfits in here, and I pretty much wear the same thing every day anyway. But I've got my pants, all of my tops, so like I have just a ton of tops that are all like this. Then I've got some long sleeves, I've got some sleeping clothes, and then I've got a ton of flannels. And then I have a ton of leggings and spandex. So literally like I've got a ton in here and I really didn't realize how much I had it in here. I also have more clothes down here. So in addition to this being a litter box, this is also a storage unit. So this houses even more clothes. So how I do this is this is where all my shoes live. So my shoes are underneath. And then I've got all my Eagle Creek packing cubes. So I've got, and I label them. So I've got my jackets, I've got my dresses and jeans. This is all of my electronics. So this is a waterproof bag or water resistant bag that I really like. And then all my shoes and some extra sunscreen and bug spray are right below it. So I have tons of storage. So one of the reasons why I picked a Ford Transit, and there's a lot of different reasons, is because of the height. So I'm 5'9", and the high roof goes to 6'8", um, when it's just a cargo van. With all of the ceiling and the wall up here, I could probably fit someone that's 6'5", and they're totally comfortable in here. Now another reason I picked it is because if I'm in the middle of nowhere and I have a Mercedes or a Dodge Promaster, chances are I won't be able to find a mechanic. They're far and few between, um, and the parts are a little bit more expensive. Whereas a Ford, everyone can work on a Ford, um, and there's Ford dealerships everywhere. Um, I've gotten oil changes in the most random place. Another reason why I purchased the Ford Transit is because I'm getting into a little bit trickier situations like snow and dirt, um, is I needed all wheel drive. So initially I was not gonna purchase a new vehicle. I've never purchased a new vehicle, but I purchased a 2020 Ford Transit high roof new because I wanted the all wheel drive um, and I wanted the warranty. Now, the last reason that I purchased the Ford Transit is because from here to here, the length you can fit 6'3". I'm 5'9 again, and so when I initially, because builders had built this out, they had only done one of the cutouts on this side, and so when I initially got it, fit my mattress, it was, it was right at 5'9". So I needed some additional space because my foot was right at the end of it. So what we did is I worked with the contractor to um, insert this uh, cutout. Now, I had already cut the mattress, so this mattress is six inch memory foam and I love it. It's literally one of the most comfortable things that I've ever slept on and I'm so comfy here, but this was already pre-cut to 5'9". And so when we added the four 
additional inches, what I ended up doing, I didn't want to get a brand new mattress, is I put my laundry here and then I put all my sweaters in the crack. Since my feet are right here, when I sleep, I don't really feel any of it and it's extra storage. So like, honestly, like I loved this solution and I think it would be awesome in other vans is like some secret storage that if you are a little bit on the short end, like cut part of your mattress out and just like put some um, sweaters there because like I don't feel it and my cats honestly love it. So hey, why not? Okay guys, that is it. That is the full van tour. If you have any questions, please ask me. I'll respond to everything. If you're interested in all the products, they're all linked below. Um, if you want to follow us on social media, my Instagram is at Quinn Gable and my TikTok, which I post a ton of videos on how to travel with your cats, as well as travel as a solo female is at Quinn Gable as well. But seriously, if you have any questions, my DMs are always open, but um, that's it. So time to put the boys in, close up shop and we're heading off to Utah.